thank you again uh, for attending our uh, Japan Talks and Asia Talks sessions. Uh, we're very happy uh, that we have a very dynamic series of lectures this semester. So COVID or no COVID, you know, at least in digital environment, we'll be able to continue our uh, intellectual communication, discussions and debates. And uh, um, this occasion, it's a collaboration between the uh, Japanese Studies Association of Istanbul, which in Turkish is Japonya Araştırmaları Derneği, and the Asian Studies Center of Boğaziçi University. Uh, the two um, institutions collaborate, uh, especially on uh, topics concerning Japan. Uh, I'm very happy and proud to uh, uh, introduce my uh, young colleague, uh, Dr. Erdal Küçük Yalçın, who's a bona fide Japanese historian like myself. So, you know, <laughs> comrades in arms, so to speak. Um, Dr. Küçük Yalçın has completed his PhD at Boğaziçi University, Department of History, uh, in the field of Japanese history. In fact, he is uh, the department's first graduate uh, PhD in Japanese history. Uh, at present, he's giving lectures at the Masters of Art uh, in Asian Studies of Boğaziçi University in topics, various subjects, including Asian history, Japanese history, Japanese techniques and know-how, um, art of war and strategic leadership, history of writing and Japanese translation. Um, Dr. Küçük Yalçın is also a researcher in the Asian Studies Center of the same university. Uh, he's also the founder of Musashi Dojo, uh, School of Creative Leadership at the Japanese Art Center, where he teaches Shodo, calligraphy, in combination with Bushido, Way of the Samurai. Uh, Dr. Küçük Yalçın is also editor-in-chief of Global Perspectives on Japan, a yearly academic journal in English, and the author of the following books in Turkish, uh, I'm giving the titles uh, in uh, translation, Miyamoto Musashi and the Book of Five Rings, his recent uh, uh, translation on art of war and leadership. The Samurai, uh, the Book of Five Rings, Art of War and Strategic Leadership, uh, the 2017 version. The recent uh, version is an extended one that just came out in 2021. The Age of the Samurai, Milestones of Japanese History, 2013. Uh, Count Otani Kozi and Turkey, that came out in 2010. The Heart of the Crane, Janissary Brotherhood and the Order of Bektashism in 2010. And a historical novel, The Seven Towers, Why Was Sultan Osman the Young? killed. Uh, I think that this novel is already translated into Japanese. Uh, you can correct me, um, Erdal, um, if I'm mistaken, but I mean, that's what I remember. Uh, so it might come out soon in Japanese in Japan. Uh, he has also published in English in the Collected Essays volume of Japan on the Silk Road, which came out of Brill in 2018. And he has an essay in the forthcoming volume of the Diogenes Journal, Special Issue on Asian Studies in Turkey. Um, Dr. Küçük Yalçın's research is a very interesting uh, journey into the Buddhist world uh, and also the samurai traditions of Japan. Uh, Count Otani, which was his PhD, is a very enigmatic figure uh, combining the tradition of Buddhism with modernity um, in uh, the history of um, uh, modern Japan. Uh, and uh, today he's going to talk to us about his translation of Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings. It's a classic in uh, Japanese uh, Bushido tradition. Uh, and I'm very excited 
and interested in hearing his uh, encounter with translation problems and translation issues, because uh, this is a full translation into Turkish. And uh, I think he's going to make a comparison uh, with the previous attempts at translation uh, as well. So um, without much ado, uh, Erdal, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, so happy to be here today and thank you for having me. Uh, and I also thank uh, all the participants uh, to, you know, uh, to join us today. Um, well, as you have uh, introduced, uh, I have been working for a long while on uh, Japanese history, but also my journey brought me to a point that I uh, decided I have to focus more on uh, the worldview, uh, the philosophy or the mindset of the Japanese in order to understand the historical development uh, in that country. And uh, well, even before that, I was uh, trying to understand uh, how Japan developed by studying economics. So my journey uh, started with economics and then it, uh, it came through uh, to uh, history and to the field of, uh, let's say, well, worldview, uh, philosophy, symbolism, etc. So today I will uh, try to talk and introduce my work on um, the book of our friends, <clears throat> because uh, this book is the final point that I arrived after all my, uh, you know, uh, works in my effort to understand uh, the Japanese society. It's a small book, it's a compact book, and it was written in 1643 by a famous, a legendary uh, samurai, a swordsman. I mean, I will talk about him uh, in a few minutes now. I will try to introduce uh, who he was. Uh, in a, a little, let's say, cave, just a few months uh, before he got sick and, you know, uh, gradually. Uh, died. So it's an important text and it is uh, among the very few texts which are uh, accepted uh, uh, globally as a, a one of the core texts of strategy or art of war. Together with whom? Um, Sun Tzu, as most of you already uh, know Sun Tzu from China. Uh, that text is also an important and critical one. Uh, and also together with, uh, you know, Machiavelli or Clausewitz or uh, Hagakure, like Yamamoto Tsunetomo. But I believe Miyamoto Musashi deserves a special uh, place among those uh, strategists. Now, um, can, am I able to uh, share my screen? Sure. You have I, to, uh, can, Sydney, please yeah, allow me. I can make you co-host now and you can mm -hmm. share your screen. Yes, no, is it all right? No, Just not yet, a second, okay. please. Somehow it doesn't allow me to do so. Sachiko Jam, can you please try making a- Okay. For Kichuki Alchen co-host. I don't know why, but it hasn't allowed me. Yes, you are the co-host yes. now. Hoja. You're the co-host now. You can use the screen as you wish. Okay. Um, are we there now? No, no, not this one. Sorry. Um, uh, let me open this one and then I will do this and there we are, I guess. Okay. Good. Ah. Uh. Yep. Up. Oh. Uh, sorry. Okay. This, this is the cover. All right. <laughs> Finally. Now, uh, we will talk about uh, the Book of Five Rings, basically, uh, but uh, I, uh, you know, uh, put a subtitle there, Understanding Translating Miyamoto Musashi, uh, because uh, as Professor Assembe already uh, introduced, I have translated this text um, a, a, a couple of years ago, and we published the, this translation in Turkish, of course, I translated it in Turkish, uh, um, in 2017, but to my surprise, uh, the copies just sold out in a few uh, months. So uh, I started working in a second edition because I had in mind 
to include some other texts if, if possible to this uh, book. But, uh, you know, uh, pandemic just entered in, in between. So I had the time in a way to work more on the text and, you know, prepare the second edition, which is an extended edition and which just came out uh, about, uh, well, about a week ago. So I'm very happy that it's in my hands now because, uh, um, well, it is one of the first attempts in the world. Let me, let me you know, uh, state that uh, to bring all the texts related to uh, Miyamoto Musashi and written by him in one, uh, you know, uh, book. So uh, within the book, not only the book of five things, but also his other texts like Dokkodo, uh, which, which means, well, uh, I will introduce that too, the, which means the uh, way to uniqueness, uh, 21 precepts. And also I included the 35 uh, principles of Bushido and also included the uh, memorial inscription of his, uh, which was uh, built by his uh, son Yori, uh, which still, uh, you know, stands uh, in Kyushu. That's another text that's uh, about him. And I also uh, uh, put, a, 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 let's say, rather short, uh, 40 or 50 pages, uh, include uh, introducing his life and his works and his times. Okay, now, today I will, uh, you know, divide my talk into basically four sections. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce, but uh, I'm sure that most of you are uh, familiar, so maybe remind you of the basic uh, concepts of Bushido, what we will be talking about. And then I will go into Miyamoto Musashi and his life and, you know, uh, uh, and what kind of a person he was. And then we will come to the book of Five Rings and the teachings uh, of uh, Musashi in that book, uh, because I believe they have uh, uh, the, 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 the books or the, 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 the chapters, uh, what he has written has a message that transcends geography and time. Mm. It has messages that everybody can take uh, and implement his or her own life even today. It is surprising. This man is a genius, I believe. Uh, and I will talk about him now. Uh, and then I will, you know, uh, 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 use the final uh, part to talk more about the translation issues and, you know, little things that I came across and uh, the things I want to uh, share with you about the process. Now, when we talk about Bushido, we talk about the way of the samurai. Bushido means the way of the samurai or the way of the warrior. Okay. But the basic uh, concepts that we will be uh, dealing with when we talk about Bushido is art of war or strategy, also leadership. Mm. So it is not only about warriors per se. Oh, <laughs> my cat. Uh, just a moment. I have to <laughs> readjust myself. <laughs> okay. It is not only about uh, warriors or soldiers or commanders. Because in our times, we don't have to, you know, uh, take a katana, the, 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 the Japanese sword in our ha hands and try to fight others uh, on the streets. But there's another uh, fight, there's another battle, there's another war in all of our uh, lives. Uh, we struggle to uh, reach our, our targets uh, and, you know, to accomplish certain things. So that's why it is meaningful in that sense too. So when we look at this uh, text, we are not talking about only uh, ei jutsu, that is the techniques of using uh, a sword or sword fencing or swordsmanship. We are also talking about leadership, uh, which I like to call strategic leadership because uh, he is giving some hints that could be used for in the strategical sense, uh, not only in the short time, but uh, in a, in a uh, longer, uh, let's say, uh, time span. Okay. Now, the word Bushido is written with these three characters. 
Bu, she, dog. So this one is bu, this one is she, this one is do. Okay, what does it mean? Obviously, the way of the samurai, but the way of the warrior, let's say. So this is the final, uh, the third uh, character, kanji character, means the way. Like in kendo, like in yaido, karate do, uh, or uh, you name it, sado, kado, kodo. Uh, there are many Japanese words, uh, most of them related with martial arts including a do in themselves. What does it mean? It means way. So it's the very same thing uh, as Taoism. That's Tao. Tao is do, so it's a way. Um, well, the first part, let's say, or the, the other two uh, characters here, the second one, the one in the middle, means gentleman or a warrior. The the main, the core of meaning comes from the first kan kanji here. It is bu, mu. So I want to focus a little bit on that for, in trying to understand what Bushido means. So this is bu. It means art of war, or at times it means war or weapons or valor or fighting spirit. It can be, or it can be used uh, with in any uh, context or in any uh, word or term that is related with military or uh, warriors. Okay, so let's keep it this way. This is art of war. It is used in many terms, like the way of the art of war, budo. This is a popular term in martial arts, budo, or buke like military families in Japanese history, or warrior like Bujin, martial arts, Bujutsu, warrior, Buyu, the courage to fight, or another word for samurai, Musha. Uh, well, I have a feeling that some of you have uh, watched the movies of uh, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, one of his movies is called uh, uh, Kage Musha. It means the shadow warrior. And that Musha is this Musha. So this ka kanji is better pronounced as Bu, as Bujutsu, Bushi, Budo, or Mu, like in Musha. What's interesting here is that Miyamoto Musashi has used the same character in his name. This is a name that he has assumed himself. Musashi, you see? This is warrior, art of war. This is in his name. And Sashi or Zo means depot, some, a place where uh, something is stored, storage. So he means with his name, Obviously, he has um, designed his own name too, Musashi. He means uh, uh, he is the one where art of war, the knowledge of art of war has been collected, gathered, and focused and concentrated. Well, we'll see how genius he is. Okay. Now, in order to understand this word, I like to go into the details of uh, its components. It's design. I believe letters are magic. They have a magic power, especially the kanji. The ideographs uh, uh, in the kanji world uh, carry, um, let's say, uh, abstract meanings. So when you go into the components, its construction, you have an idea what it was meant to be when it was created, invented, designed by its designer, the first designer. You see, now, this character is composed of three parts. One of them is here. It, is, it means one. The second one is here. It means to stop. And the third one is here. It's a bit large. You see this uh, horizontal line? and this uh, uh, hook-like uh, part here and a, a dot. This means blackness, darkness, uh, floating, 
uh, etc. But in the in various sense, it means you can you can understand it as uncertainty. So if you if you want to define Bu or the art of war, we come to this conclusion: art of war is to unite your 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 uh, resources your human capital your uh, materials your experience your uh, you name it your knowledge everything to unite unify to become one to make one to focus to concentrate in order to stop to halt to put an end to uncertainty or chaotic situations or anything that lies between your target and yourself. So this is the uh, uh, essential meaning that is hidden within the kanji, kanji itself. It is, not it is not a coincidence then, it became a, a core uh, term uh, in the samurai or warrior world. Now, the term Bushido was introduced into uh, the West into Western languages, well, this time it is uh, English, by a person, a Japanese national called uh, Nitobe Inazo. And his first book introducing Bushido and the samurais, the samurai values, was published in, in the United States in 1900. And when it was published, it, it, it was, it, 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 you know, uh, quickly became popular because Mr. Nitobe had studied his, uh, uh, let's say, um, his uh, art of war or you know related subjects very well, and he knew knighthood, the Western uh, code of chivalry, very well, and he he is making very. Uh, let's say, intelligent connections between the two warrior classes. So the codes of the knights, the chivalry codes, and etc. cetera, he's, he's uh, quite, let's say, uh, masterfully binds the two, two together and introduces Bushido as a concept to the Western world. So there, he has established the foundation of Bushido that is known and is, is popular among the countless dojos of martial arts around the world. This is uh, a, a, an important world, let me say. I, I cannot emphasize it enough because the Japanese culture is living in dojos all around the world. You name it, in all the countries, in all the smallest or biggest countries. In all the developing or developed countries, in in the in the core of the periphery, it doesn't matter. It's everywhere. It's it, it's there with uh, the dojos of uh, uh, let's say uh, kendo, iaido, uh, aikido. I'm sure you're all familiar with these words, aikido, uh, or others. So, uh, Nito Inazo has uh, introduced seven principles of being uh, of bushido. These are the keywords. The first he says is justice, gi, bravery, you, benevolence, jin, uh, veracity, makoto, uh, politeness, rei, honor, meyo, loyalty, chugi. Well, with all due respect to him, I have uh, some, uh, let's say, reserves in uh, accepting them as they are because these are the values that are uh, selected by uh, Nitobe Inazo himself in order to promote uh, Bushido, which, is, which I have no problem with. But it has to have, if you're you know, building a theory, it has to have some uh, firm basis, a, 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 a foundation, a, a strong uh, background to it. Uh, these are values that can be attributed to any uh, warrior class around the world in the uh, global history. Well, now, my alternative I came up with, or, uh, according to my uh, understanding, uh, has uh, that uh, foundations as far as I can see in J Japanese history. 
Now, these are the five Confucian values of a leader, which is called Gojo, or the five constants. This concept entered into Japan uh, with the introduction of uh, Confucianism itself, even with uh, the introduction of uh, Ritsuryo system, uh, the laws and regulations that were brought from the Tang China. When the first Japanese central state was established in seventh century, the, uh, uh, the court cap system was based on the, these five constants, the Gojo, the Confucian virtues. Okay, what are they? It's this. First of them, first of all the character traits a leader should have, according to Confucius, is empathy. I mean, if you remember in the uh, previous slide, you have seen this uh, kanji, and it was uh, written. Let, let me show you. Let me show you there. This kanji is the same kanji, and here it is translated as benevolence. I have. I, I don't object that it is also true. It is in the meaning of uh, this kanji. Also, some uh, translated it with, uh, com as compassion, which is also true. Okay, but. When we go into, when we dive into the uh, world of meaning, we have to find, we, try, we must uh, uh, yearn to find the core of the meaning itself. So when I go uh, there, I find empathy. Why? As you can see, there are two parts of this kanji. And the first part, the radical, is hito. It means men, well, not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, gender-based men. It means human being men, and the other part, the other component means two. So here, the, the designer of this kanji meant, and the user, Confucius, Confucius also uh, related, obviously, uh, is one person becoming, uh, be becoming two. You know, uh, the ability to put yourself in shoes of the other, to become the other, to think like the other. So, it's empathy. The first of all character traits a leader should have, according to uh, the, let's say, um, uh, Japanese samurai or, uh, or the kanji culture world in Asia, in ancient times, since ancient times, is empathy. A leader should have empathy, not sympathy, not necessarily sympathy, like a doctor, you know, uh, a doctor uh, does not have to uh, sympathize with uh, his or her uh, patient, but has to do uh, empathy. Okay, that's the difference. Now, the second uh, is morality. This also happens to be in the list of Nitobe Inazoro, but uh, with another concept, context. Uh, uh, people like to call this as justice. In most of the translations in the West, we see justice in a, a place of gi, but it, it is not exactly justice. It includes justice, but the, 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 the verb gi, uh, how can I explain, uh, is used for the um, main uh, rule of existence in the universe. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is there is a way, according to Lao Tzu, which, I mean, the way uh, is the concept that he has uh, basis Taoism, the whole thing is uh, about it, that way is the rule that the universe revolves around. So there is some, there is a way that is true and uh, correct, and what it isn't is wrong. You know what I mean? If, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you can follow. So morality is the ability of human being to divide, to realize, to, 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 to consciously choose between right and wrong. The ability to recognize what is right, what is right, not, uh, wrong. That is morality. That's ethics. Uh, that is expected from a leader. 
The third one, manners or etiquette. I mean, there are many times that I'm asked uh, by people who are interested in Asian values, especially in Japan, why do they respect each, each other so much? And you know, uh, how respectful a nation uh, can be? I mean, they, they, there, are, there is an admiration there, uh, but this is a value that is proposed by Confucius. It, it has its long, uh, uh, deep roots there in history. It is manners, etiquette. One has to know how to behave in, a, a, in an environment or in each environment he or she enters into. Okay, uh, this is what the uh, samurai used to call reading the air. Mm -hmm. You have to know to read the atmosphere uh, as soon as you enter a new, uh, uh, let's say, space. You have to calculate who is uh, superior, who is uh, inferior, who is uh, good, who is bad, who is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, elegant, who is coarse, etc. You have to have that, you have to cultivate that uh, ability in yourself. And this is required for the living. The fourth one is knowledge, wisdom. A leader should know and must be eager to learn more, must be flexible, must not stop somewhere in, you know, uh, at, a, at a certain uh, point and say, I know everything. And everybody should learn from me. Knowledge is a continuous process. So uh, this is knowledge. And the fifth one, fifth one is uh, especially important, I believe, because it is trust. Not in the sense uh, that, you, you, not only in the sense that you must be trustable, but also uh, you, you, you have, you must be, uh, you must trust others. You must be self-confident, but people must, uh, 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 must be able to confide in you too. And the kanji carries the secret of this concept too. Here, uh, I'm already, uh, I, I'm sure, even if you don't know uh, Chinese or Japanese, you are not familiar with this component, this, you know, uh, 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 part here. It is the radical, it means men. And what's there in the second part? There is a, a rectangle here, and there are lines, you know, coming out of, you know, symbolically speaking, coming out of that rectangle, that box. That box stands for the mouth. So what comes out of mouth? You tell me, words. This means word. So the person who stands behind, stands by his or her words, keeps his or her promises, whatever the cost is, becomes the trustable person. A leader must be trustable. And if, you, if he or she does the other four, the previous four, so uh, empathize with others, be moral, uh, you know, uh, keep up, uh, keep with the manners and, you know, in, try to increase his or her knowledge, the trust will follow. Uh, dear friends, I, I, I mean, the, 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 all this time I have been working with the Japanese in, uh, in, the, in the business world, in the academia, in whatever you name it, I, I, I came to this conclusion that they are uh, consciously trying to do this. this. And it is all, uh, I have the feeling, uh, is based on Bushido, not consciously, not necessarily, but this <coughs> code of uh, conduct and, uh, uh, let's say, worldview is uh, taught to masses by the uh, education system. Okay. Another uh, Bushido concept that I want to introduce you today in order for you to understand, uh, to have a better uh, view of uh, Bushido is Chigyo Goitsu, this term, this phrase. This was, uh, sorry, uh, okay. Uh, this was especially a, an important phrase during the Tokugawa period in the 250 years of uh, uh, peace in Japan, where the samurai, during which the samurai uh, dominated the whole society, Chigyo Goitsu. It was so important 
that even the samurai's income was called chiko taka, the amount of, of the samurai's chiko, the same kanji was ever used. It, what, what does it mean? The unity of knowledge and action. So in this worldview, you may know things, but if you don't attune your, uh, let's say, actions with it, if you don't do what's necessary when it's necessary, that means you don't know. If you know the right, you should show the right. That's why. But, but on the other hand, it's uh, true both ways. I mean, uh, if, if you're a wise person, you act like a wise person, right? But this uh, way of thinking says, if you act like a, uh, of you, or if you, uh, if you are taught, if you are trained how to act like a wise person, then you become wise too. You know, that's why etiquette becomes important. Manners become important. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, several years ago, uh, there was uh, this uh, World Soccer Championship in Brazil. And the Japanese uh, spectators, uh, they cleaned their, uh, the places that they sit after the match was over. And all the world, world uh, look uh, at them uh, with admiration. But, you know, nobody joined and you know, uh, cleaned their own places. But they, uh, you know, appreciated what the Japanese did. But this is how they live. It is normal for them. Why? Because they are taught so. The, 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 the code of conduct, conduct says, if you act one way, you become that way. Okay. Uh, the final concept that I want to introduce or remind you today is uh, this concept, because it is also core for the samurai values. It is called the bumbu ryodo, bumbu ryodo. Uh, there are four kanjis here, bun, bu, ryo, do. Each means bun stands for culture. Uh, or arts, arts of peace, I like to call it arts of peace. Or, and then the next one, you already know this now, right? I have explained it in a few uh, uh, slides ago. Bu, the same bu, stands for uh, art of war. Ryo means double or twofold. And the way you already know this too, like kendo, aido, ken, uh, aikido, right? Uh, the way. So it's the twofold way of parent sword, or as I like to call it, Russian sword. This is a core concept in understanding the samurai or the Japanese. Uh, well, I will explain uh, a little bit more later, I'll elaborate. But as far as I can understand, this is uh, creative leadership because this code says in order to excel in arts of war you have to cultivate your artistic uh, uh, let's say skills and understanding you have to have uh, aesthetic uh, uh, understanding the power of aesthetics because art shows the samurai what cannot be seen by others. The ability, the talent, the power to see the unseen or the unseeable is a core power for a warrior because then you can, you can um, uh, let's say, um, you can foresee the movements your, of your opponent before it occurs. That's why it was a valued uh, skill. Okay, now, now I'd like to go uh, into the topic of Miyamoto Musashi. I'd like to introduce him very, you know, uh, simply to you. It is not that easy. I have written about, I don't know, 50 or 60 pages in the book. Uh, so uh, it is not that easy, but 
uh, it, I will just you know uh, bring forth some important uh, aspects of uh, his life uh, or his character. Miyamoto Musashi was born is a samurai uh, that was born in 1584 at the end of the Warring States period, Sengoku period of uh, Japan. Uh, he was uh, born uh, in a province uh, called uh, Harima. And he was the son of a martial artist himself. His father uh, was, a, uh, was a teacher of uh, martial arts, including ninjutsu, usage of various weapons, and etc. He, he had uh, his uh, initial education of martial arts from his father. But interestingly, uh, he would excel uh, to uh, un unforeseeable uh, levels until uh, he died in 1645 in uh, Kumamoto, uh, down south in Kyushu. Okay. Now, Miyamoto Musashi had become a legend as a swordsman, and uh, he's remembered, still remembered vividly in Japanese culture for the deeds he had done. He's like a, a figure of uh, Hercules. He is like... Uh, uh, Fudo Myo, in a way. Uh, interestingly, he has, uh, he has, uh, as a sculptor, he has uh, prepared a Fudo Myo uh, sculpture. I will, I will show a little bit later. Uh, so, uh, a, a, a Buddhist uh, icon of a uh, warrior, uh, let's say. He is revered and respected, uh, and he is a theme, he is a topic for many uh, creative uh, works of artists. Now, here we see a woodwork print that, uh, showing how he fought with, bat, with a bat, a giant bat. Uh, in the second one, he's uh, fighting with a, another beast. Here we see a woodblock showing as, uh, fighting with, uh, uh, skillfully uh, uh, with his uh, opponents. This is from uh, late 19th century. There are also modern uh, depictions of Moto Musashi. He's an idealized uh, uh, warrior. So he, he didn't look like this exactly, but, uh, you know, uh, contemporary artists, uh, they love him, his story, and they introduced uh, Miyamoto Musashi to the new generations with new ways of, uh, you know, uh, portraying him. This is another portrait by another artist, a Japanese movie about Musashi. Mm -hmm. Another drama of NHK, Taiga drama, it means uh, it, it lasted long, it was a, lo a long series. Uh, in all uh, cases, he is enacted by the most popular and talented artists of Japan. And also in animes, in animations, in uh, games, you will find him as a strong character uh, standing against injustices and etc. He is such a big legend. Also, in this uh, uh, woodwork print here, you can see his fight, his legendary fight against a, a legendary uh, opponent called Sasaki Kojiro. And uh, this fight is an actual fight, uh, a duel that was done uh, on the date. April 13, 16, 12. Because Musashi had started dueling and challenging famous uh, swords masters all around the country since 13 years old. Can you believe it? Since 13 years old. His first duel was in, when he was 13 with a sword master who had a famous uh, sword master who had uh, come from another province and who had challenged anybody who would uh, you know dare to uh, come and fight with him and interestingly our little 13 year old uh, musashi wrote his name uh, on the uh, list that uh, challenged this uh, fighter and the next day although his uncle tried hard to convince the uh, uh, famous swordsmaster to forgive this little child. Uh, he said, well, uh, yeah, he was confident. Uh, and he said, 
Well, he has to come himself tomorrow the, uh, morning to the uh, place that we will uh, do our duel, and then he will uh, apologize in person. Then I will forgive him. But Musashi went there, and he didn't apologize, and he fought, <laughs> and he, well, uh, he, 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 he left the uh, field with victory. And after that, until he was 30 years old, until this duel that we see here, that happened in 13, uh, April 13, he, uh, he participated in 60 duels, and in all the 60, he was victorious. He was invincible. He was famous during uh, his youth uh, throughout the country, too, as a swords master. But Sasaki Kojiro was a famous swords master, and he uh, uh, actually, he, uh, Musashi went to the uh, uh, Ganyujima. As a matter of fact, I lived uh, very close to uh, Ganyujima, but then I didn't know uh, in a town called Shimonoseki, uh, which is the sister city of Istanbul, by the way. And this uh, sea that you see uh, behind Musashi, who is flying, depicted as flying, by the way, uh, is Shimonoseki Strait, the Kammon Straits. Uh, so, uh, well, when you go there, you can, you can still see uh, the Ganyujima, the island, the little island that this duel took place. Anyhow, what I want to uh, uh, emphasize here is that you can see he's depicted with two swords in his two hands. He says in, uh, in the Book of Five Rings, one has to use all his weapons before dying. Is it all right to die with your weapons uh, sashed in your belly? He asks. He means that you have to try your best to realize your true potential. You have to do everything in your might to win against all odds. So uh, the, the, the text of Gorincho, the, the uh, Book of Five Rings, is so interesting. It has levels of meaning in it. You can read it as a uh, yaijutsu or techniques of the fencing uh, superficially, but if you go deeper and deeper, you will find parallel meanings. So after this fight, this exact fight, he changes his uh, way of living. He started asking questions to himself. We will see uh, what he asked. Okay. Well, uh, he's so famous that you see, with this scene is so famous that he's uh, depicted here with uh, Sasaki Kojiro and this fight here uh, in a, a sculpture as a monument uh, at Ganyujima. Uh, well, I, 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 let me not forget, he came, he arrived at the uh, uh, meeting point, the appointment uh, place, three hours, almost three hours later than he promised. This is a message that he's giving. The fight starts before you go to the battlefield. When you go there, when you go there, it is the fight. Uh, even if you sleep, it is the fight. You're fighting the final uh, battle. So uh, that's uh, uh, the message uh, we can get from his uh, teachings. Okay, now. Musashi, as a sword master, as I said, is famous, but it is not enough. He's a Renaissance man. There are very few people who has uh, uh, you know, demonstrated so, so big a talent in uh, so many uh, areas. He's a calligrapher. I mean, he didn't give too many, uh, 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 let's say, uh, works, but his works are masterpieces of calligraphy. Uh, for example, here, it says, fighting spirit. You can see how bold his brush strokes are. He's an artist, a Sumia artist, a, a, a Sumia artist, I mean, ink painting artist. These are all his works. And he is counted among the Sumia artists in, in Japanese art history. These are all his works. He is a designer. This is a saddle he has designed. 
This is a, a sword and this is a scabbard he has designed. He's a sculptor. As I said, this is Fudong Yo, uh, the Buddhist, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, one of the wisdom kings, enlightened, immovable king of Buddhist pantheon, uh, one of the five uh, great kings. But this is a work by Musashi. He is a garden designer, Japanese garden, Zen garden designer. I took only two uh, samples here, but there are other uh, gardens that he had designed. He is also an urban planner, and he has he was functional in designing the uh, Akashi Castle and the city uh, during his lifetime. Now, maybe the most important work that he has done is the Book of Five Rings. It is the culmination of his whole life. And uh, that's why he's a writer and thinker. And this is the book that I uh, mentioned, uh, the, uh, the Turkish uh, uh, translation of the Book of Five Rings that I did in uh, 2017. Now uh, we have uh, this one. Well, this one in my hand. <laughs> I'm happy. Uh, I have included my own calligraphy, you know, uh, ded dedicated to him uh, on the cover. Uh, but uh, th this book uh, is the extended version of uh, the Book of uh, Five Rings. Now, let's go into the Book of Five Rings. This book, this text is translated into almost all languages in the world. Most, in most of them, not once, many times. If you, you know, write in the Amazon, the Book of Five Rings, you will see many versions of it. So, I mean, some people say uh, you, a person dies when the last person that knows your name dies. Miyamoto Muta, Musashi seems to live forever. His name will live, obviously, uh, in many languages. So, uh, you see, I mean, in Arabic, in Persian, in Thai, in uh, you name it, Italian, uh, in uh, Russian, and uh, these are only a few examples. Now, let's come to the text. There are many versions of uh, Musashi's text. The original itself is extinct. We don't know where it is now. The one that was written by Musashi himself in that cave in Kumamoto uh, in uh, 1643 is, does not exist. It is not found yet, at least. But that he had, we know that he had given uh, his handwriting to his disciple called Terao Magonojo. And that disciple, uh, he, was the, he, he was a follower of uh, Musashi in the school of Emmeryu or the Niten Ichiryu or the school of two uh, swords uh, or the, let's say, uh, which I like to translate the Niten Ichiryu. Uh, the, the the school of fencing uh, that's called uh, Two Worlds One. Two Worlds One. Niten Ichi. Many people like to translate that, that as Two Skies as One because the uh, the kanji also means skies, but obviously uh, Musashi meant Two Worlds as One. What he meant by worlds is this world the other world dark light day night good bad two as one so the text of uh, terao maganojo is also not found but there are connections that we uh, find uh, in the dojo in the school of uh, uh, musashi the enmeiryu uh, at the places that the tradition uh, still survives. Uh, so there are families who have the, uh, you know, old uh, copies uh, of uh, uh, scrolls uh, in their archives. So uh, researchers have done, uh, have done meticulous research on, uh, in trying to find uh, the real copy, let's say. Uh, but uh, we know that it was, 
Well, there are also uh, some copies, uh, hundreds of copies all around the country, but uh, uh, they are excluded uh, from uh, such, you know, uh, scholarly research uh, because they are known from their, their from 19th or 20th centuries. Uh, but these are the main uh, copies that we know to survive from the 17th or early 18th centuries, like Nakayama uh, archive or the Tachibana archive or the Echigo uh, Ishi archive, Hosokawa archive. These are all samurai families. The oldest copy that we know of from the 17th uh, century is the, uh, in this last one, uh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I will, I will come back. Yep. Um, the Yoshida family uh, has this uh, copy, and these are the uh, writings here. So I was lucky because uh, I didn't have to do that uh, uh, long and cumbersome. Uh, research myself, uh, the Harima Miyamoto Mushi Kenkyukai, the research association of Harima, the place that he was born. Uh, there is a very good uh, association there uh, who has done uh, that research and found uh, arrived at a, a you know authoritative text uh, that uh, that they used uh, by you know, analyzing all these texts together. Uh, and uh, had done comparisons and etc. Uh, there is a almost a final text we have in hand, so I focused on uh, that. I translated it from the 17th century uh, original. Uh, it took time. I mean, this was a project for over uh, 10 years for me. Uh, I, I had been taking notes for a long while, uh, but uh, I started focusing on uh, concentrating on this job uh, for about five years ago. Uh, so I cannot say it was an easy task because the Japanese that is used in the 17th century during the times of Miyamoto Musashi is not that similar to what is used now in modern Japan. But, you know, I, I was used to some, uh, uh, to a certain extent, I was used to uh, this type of usage of language. Uh, during my PhD studies, I studied the Meiji, early Meiji period uh, 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 texts and some earlier even. So, well, uh, it, was, it was an enjoyable uh, journey for me. Now, he starts the book of uh, Five Rings with the following uh, words. He says, I'm a samurai born in Harima province. My name is Shinman Musashi no Kami Fujiwara no Harurabu. I have reached the age of 60. I have wandered all around the country and confronted many masters of various schools of strategy, do it for 60 times and never once lost the upper hand. These happened between 30 and 28, 29 years of age. After 30, I looked back and realized that I hadn't won those victories due to my maturity in art of war. Then with the hope of reaching the profound meaning of the way, I worked nonstop, day and night. And I was 50 when I met the way of the art of war naturally. Since then, Without having a way to look for, I'm living shadow and light. So I'm passing my time. That's why it means. Now, he has organized his writing in five sections. His intelligence is obvious right from the start. The book is not called the Book of Five Rings by himself exactly. But it was an obvious uh, option uh, in the uh, second half of 19th century when it also became, uh, once again, became uh, popular uh, with the major restoration. Because he has uh, divided uh, his text into five uh, chapters, and those five chapters each stand for a five uh, an element in the Five element theory. As you know, the five elements, according to this tradition, uh, which is more popular in Japan as opposed to China, it is also a Buddhist uh, understanding of uh, universe. These uh, elements 
are uh, assumed to be the elements uh, composing all matter. What are they? It is called the five great, the godai. Just like the godai, uh, the, the same uh, is used for the five wisdom kings. That's that's something uh, Jennifer might be interested in. The, the same uh, five great, it is used for the five wisdom kings. Uh, ground, water, fire, wind, and void. So, what does this mean? Mm. Although it is called the five rings, it is only a symbol. There is no ring or whatsoever. It is a veil that hides the real symbolic meanings behind. The five rings is crystallized in this form and it is called the Tower of Five Rings, and it is located in most of the Buddhist temples uh, solemnly or modestly in the entrances. The Tower of Five Rings. So it is nothing like the Five Rings of the Olympics. It is possible, on the other hand, when people thought about uh, the Five Rings of uh, Olympics, uh, somebody might have an idea about uh, Musashi, I doubt that. I, uh, uh, it is possible. But, okay, that's not the point. Here, this is the Tower of Five Rings. So, you see, instead of circles, we find other geometric designs. This is the ground. It is rectangular. This is water, just above it. This is fire. It is pyramidical. Uh, this is a sphere, by the way. Water is... Uh, represented by a sphere. Pyramid is fire. Half moon is wind. Almond shape is void. So void stands on top of all elements. Why? Because void complements existence, complements the matter. So, void is not non-existent. It exists in this uh, line of thought. Okay. Now, he says, strategy is the craft of warriors. Commanders must implement this art and soldiers must know. On the left hand, you can see uh, different uh, uh, keywords of uh, uh, art of war. Uh, the, uh, the one on, uh, above, it's called hey ho. Uh, it means uh, art of war. The one in the middle, senjaku, it means strategy. And this uh, final uh, word here, senjutsu, it is tactics. So these are all words that are used within this book. Okay. The main principles for those who wish to enter. My way, he says, but the word strategy, so being a leader of your society in all the fields of action, uh, it doesn't ma matter. You don't have to be a warrior in order to understand uh, what he meant. Uh, he says, be straight in your thoughts, work with all your might, experience various arts and crafts, learn the ways of various professions, differentiate between merit and demerit in everything, like ghee, you know, if you remember a few slides ago, uh, the, uh, more morality, as I said, not only justice. Know how to tell good and bad in all situations. Understand the visible, the invisible by feeling it, by sensing it. This is important. You know, people ask me why uh, 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 Japanese pottery are so simple. Uh, why kintsugi? You know, the art of uh, mending broken uh, pottery uh, with gold is so popular in Japan and why it is all because of this. You expect as a samurai, a, a, a master of uh, Bushido to, uh, to be able to understand the invisible only by feeling it. Attend even the smallest detail, do nothing meaningless. Okay, 
Now, I'll try to give only a you know, small introduction about each chapter, just to give you an idea. Now, uh, the first one is called, sorry, uh, the, uh, the, the Book of uh, uh, Ground. Uh, I put here a rather, uh, you know, uh, it may seem unrelevant to you, but it is uh, for me because in the ground chapter, he tells everything he is going to do uh, within the book. This is an, a, another hidden message. I, I, I came to realize that he, he is giving another text within the text. What he means is that uh, ground is the start of everything. It is the origin. It is where uh, other things flourish, come from, originate. So ground is the solid uh, basis that we stand on. If you think further and further, you will come to the conclusion that uh, ground is, uh, um, well, is the basis of our existence in that sense. I mean, if you don't have a solid ground under your feet, you will float. You cannot move forward. So in order to proceed forward, you have to have a firm ground, okay? This is the way to understand that. And what is the firm ground that we stand on as individuals? It's our history. It is our history. We stand our own, uh, on, our, on top of our own history our uh, previous uh, experiences and uh, knowledge and, you know, everything we have done before. And that forms our identity. Uh, Musashi gives uh, the hints, the clues uh, that you have to, before starting uh, your journey, you have to be sure of your identity, of your history, of your past, of what you know, what you like, what you are, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, what you have a talent for, what you're inclined to, then a roadmap will come and you will know your, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, the way to go. Everything is about the way. The way is a individual. You have to walk it yourself. Now, within the uh, uh, first chapter, he is giving, he's introducing an imp interesting uh, let's say, metaphor for leadership. He says, to be a commander, to be a general, to be a commanding samurai, to be a leader, therefore, is just like being a carpenter. Well, I had difficulties uh, talking about translation to translate it into Turkish because there are uh, a number of words in Turkish, like marangos, like dulger, like uh, etc. But uh, this uh, word, the concept, daiku, what it means to Japanese, doesn't exactly mean uh, uh, the same uh, for Turkish people. It, uh, it, the same is true for uh, the Western languages too, but we have to describe. So in, in the book, I try to explain what he means by that. He is, he is combining architecture, the, 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 the profession of an architect, with the profession of a carpenter. So he's talking about design. He is saying uh, that the, the kanjis that were used for, that are used in Japan for carpentry, carpenter explains what it is to be a, a commander, a leader. Why? Because there are two uh, kanjis here. The first one means great grand. The second one means design, craft, plan. So it is the grand craft. He, he continues to elaborate his metaphor and he says, just like a head carpenter, a samurai, a, a, a master of arts, art of war should know his own measurements his own material, his own, uh, uh, let's say, tools. He should know the measurements abroad. He should know the designs of temples and his own uh, <clears throat> house. He should also know the talents and he should also know how to distinguish the various skills among P 
people that he is going to assign his uh, works. And uh, he has to coordinate all of them together. So this is design. This is the grand, grand design or the grand plan. And that's being a leader. So according to Musashi, he's giving all these as a list there. And the characteristics for a leader are as follows. To take action decisively, to take to advance orderly once started acting, to do nothing but nothing sloppily, to know what it really what really matters, to know to realize the real core of uh, to, uh, the meaning of uh, what's uh, important, realize ups and downs in, uh, in people's spirit and encourage them or motivate them whenever it is necessary. To know what is impossible. Now, that's an interesting uh, addition here. A leader must know what is impossible. And he says, these are the characteristics of a leader. And this is the essence of art of war. He says, on whichever way you walk, if you master your craft to a level second to none, you will glorify your name. This is the way of strategy. I mean, you can understand it if it is face value. I mean, like, you know, you, you have to work hard to, uh, uh, to be the best in the world, which is also true. And this is what I see in the Japanese uh, society. Uh, whatever uh, craft they do, they try to do it best. But you can also read this as a roadmap to create a brand for your own name or for your company or your product or your service. Glorifying your name is to uh, you know, uh, create a brand in that sense. Uh, you have to be committed to be the best in the world in your own field. Okay, the second chapter is called the uh, Book of uh, Water. And he says, water, oh, just on, it's a bit dark. Okay, sorry. I think it's a bit better, right? I don't know uh, if we have time. I mean, uh, I, I forgot uh, time, but uh, well, uh, I'm going to, <clears throat> we, are, we have passed uh, half of it. Uh, Semiha, do we have time? I mean, how long? I, I? I, I think, uh, yeah, we, we have uh, about uh, 10, 15 minutes okay. Uh, okay. because, you know, you want to cover, I mean, it's an important topic and you want to deal with uh, the section on translation yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, going forward. So he says, Water takes the shape of a drop, but also an ocean. So it changes shape and it takes the shape of the utensil it goes into. So one must be like that. So it is the principle of flexibility he is trying to uh, tell us in the second chapter. Superficially uh, speaking, when you read the uh, text there, you can also uh, see a text that's showing the techniques of using a uh, sword according to Niten Ichu school. But you have to, you know, uh, try to read the uh, subtext there. This is what he means. He is saying that you have to be flexible through, through your life, lifetime. You must not be. Uh, you must not fixate yourself. This is what he says. Itsuku wa shimuru te nari. Itsukazaru wa ikuru te nari. It means fixation is death. One who moves, lives. I mean, this is a basic rule all the commanders, when they go to the general staff academies, they are taught like this. You, know? you have to be um, mobile. You have to be mobile. Uh, you must not stop uh, learning. You have to be curious. I think curiosity 
is the main message we should take from the book of uh, war. Curiosity. The person or the society who loses, loses the feeling of curiosity will stop developing. I mean, I like to give the example of the Middle East. In the Middle Ages, uh, Middle East was the source of knowledge, you know, astronomy, mathematics, medicine, you name it, geometry. It all flourished from the Middle East. But now, after the Crusades, I mean, this feeling, this, this, this ability to be curious was transferred to the West. And there came Renaissance, reform, and enlightenment, age of discoveries, and the world changed. Whoever is curious, keeps being curious, uh, deserves and finds success, according to Miyamoto Musashi. Okay, he says, if you have the power of knowledge, you can see the secrets of each and every environment. He always stresses several times uh, what is called uh, uh, power of knowledge, bilgi gücü in Turkish. I find this interesting that he is uh, putting a, a strong stress on power of knowledge. He is aware that the more you know, the more powerful you are. Now, <clears throat> the third chapter is the book of fire. He says, I will tell uh, what I think about the battle itself, the battlefield, what you should do there uh, in this book, because like fire, battle itself is fiery. It is violent. It changes shape quickly. You have to know how to adapt yourself to changing situations during a fight or struggle. So this is adaptability, but during uh, uh, the uh, struggle itself, and uh, if you cannot control, I mean, if you can control your power, you can uh, use fire as something good. But if, if, you, if it's out of control, it will devastate, it will uh, destroy you and your uh, purposes. So this is the book of fire. A small quote from there. If you have to die, well, I have already mentioned a little bit. If you have to die, you must die with all your weapons exhausted. Is it all right to die with your swords on your belly? Oh, that's, that's Momo, by the way, uh, my cat. Uh, okay. No. Okay. Secondly, I, I, I find this uh, phrase really important. He says, today, if you can win against yet, uh, your yesterday self, tomorrow you can beat novices and later you will beat masters. What he means by that is that the real fight, the real struggle is against yourself. Real champions know it. They are aware. You don't, you don't really fight with the other. You fight with yourself. You try to be better than yourself. You know your limits. You know your uh, talent. You know your skills. You know your level. So uh, real champions, they fight uh, against uh, themselves. You will see the record breakers before starting their uh, matches uh, or uh, let's say runs or uh, their, uh, let's say, endeavors. They, they concentrate, they, they cut out from the world. And I see that in uh, Japanese, uh, also other uh, champions too, in sports especially. The fourth one is the Book of Wind. He says, just like, just like the wind carries sounds and odors and smells from far areas, distant areas, one has to know, learn other styles, other cultures, other schools, others. To know the other is crucial. That's why he starts telling in details, in meticulous detail, about the ways and attitudes and techniques of each and every other 
uh, schools of uh, Bushido in his contemporary Japan. Now, he says, one who knows not the others will not know, we know nothing self. You have to know others in order to know yourself. He says, beware, any tiny deviation from your way today will evolve into a large deviation by time. Wanting and excess in all things are the same. So finally, the book of Void. It's fascinating that the book of Void is only one page, so small a text. His message is obvious there. If you have come as far as this point, I don't have to tell much to you. You will understand with few words. So, Void, with this word, well, I, I am gradually entering into the translation uh, part. Uh, with this kanji, uh, I was, well, I had to work on it. I had to think on it uh, because it can mean void, but what is void? I mean, it is, it is not an easy uh, concept to understand. Uh, you can also say uh, it is nothingness, it is emptiness, but do they really uh, give us the meaning that we look for? So, while uh, translating into Turkish, I turned into my own culture because uh, as Professor Assemble uh, at the start uh, uh, introduced to you, I have written another book called The Janissary Brotherhood and Bektashism. So I, I had entered into the Sufism uh, uh, debates and you know, uh, into the, uh, let's say, texts of uh, Sufis. Uh, then I had uh, come across some important teachings which helped me in translating this uh, concept of ku, uh, I must confess. So in Buddhism, especially in Zen, we have three levels of existence, let's say. It is the world of the you, that is this world, the mundane world, uh, the world where things are, they exist. And next comes the world of Mu, where, well, this is a negation, obviously, where the world where uh, uh, the, the, the uh, let's say, existent is absent. This is the absence level. And on top of that, there is Ku. This is the highest point a, a Buddhist, a Zen Buddhist uh, monk might yearn for. And it is written with the same kanji, as you can see. By, this, by the way, have you realized that this small component here is the very same component that Musashi used in describing leadership and carpentry. This is design. This is creativity. This is planning and uh, implementing, executing. And this one stands for uh, actions, acts of heavens, skies. This is the size, this is action. So the ideas, the vision that, that's coming from above and turning into plans and designs and creativity. So, okay. So it's not only uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, void is not nothingness. Mm. It lives, it creates, it exists, it interferes, it, it is there. There is something there, okay? This is the, well, it is fascinating how this designer thousands of years ago of this kanji taught about this and, you know, uh, uh, depicted this concept in this little uh, ideograph. So, when I looked into Tasawwuf, Sufism, I came 
across some similar uh, concepts. According to this concept, the first level of existence uh, is not existence, let's say, uh, the first level uh, in advancement, uh, let's say, intellectually uh, as a dervish is Turkey Dunya. So it accepts the world of uh, uh, material world, the mundane, but the monk, the thinker, the uh, pathfarer uh, aims to leave the mundane for the sake of the other world. Okay? So the other world, the second level, is Terki Ukpa. When you reach the other world, symbolically, philosophically, you will yearn for leaving, abandoning the other worldly. And the highest level for Tasavvuf is, well, this is also fascinating. It says, Terki Terk, abandonment of abandonment. There is a level that you abandon. Well, there's no word there. We are, we are, you know, as a translator, you have difficulties. As a, as a, as a human being, you're, uh, uh, you have difficulties. You, are, uh, 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 you know, try to uh, tell what they mean, but everything is over there. Huh? But it is not an end in itself. So it is uh, varlik, yokluk, boşluk or hiçlik. Boşluk. In our contemporary Turkish, there is a kind of derogatory or negative meaning in boşluk. Boşluğa düşmek, to fall into nothingness. We don't, we don't much, you know, uh, 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 like that much. But when I thought about it, I came to the conclusion that I should use boşluk because uh, boşluk, uh, the emptiness, which is not really empty, is combining the uh, others. It is everything that is in between other elements. Just, you know, visualize an atom in your mind. There is this nucleus, neutrons, electrons, positrons, but there is emptiness, void in between. So the void is not extinct. It is not absent. It is there and it complements. So it is the spirit in that sense of what you do. Okay, well, this is a long discussion. I don't want to go uh, further to it, but uh, with his uh, words, point is that anything extant is in fact not extant. Therefore, naturally, void is not extant too. If you know the extant, you can understand the extinct, and by time, you will understand the meaning of the word. So, the more you know about Bushido, the more about history, the more about philosophy, mind, Buddhism, uh, various forms of Buddhism, uh, and uh, kanjis and etc. You finally have uh, start to have a feeling that you try. You will. You are uh, coming to a point that you have a glimpse of what. Miyamoto Musashi is trying to say. It is not that easy. He continues, he says, ones who grasp the true meaning of the way can distance themselves from it. They move on the way of strategy with inner freedom and reach a natural but mysterious for others uniqueness. Well, uh, this word started making me to think more and more about it uh, after I published the first edition. What I mean by that is that uh, I also included the Dokkodo uh, text, uh, the other 21 precepts. I mean, it's a short text, but it gives the uh, principles uh, that Musashi gives uh, for the ones who want to follow his path. Uh, here, well, you see, this Dokodo is translated into English. You will find, if you write in Google, you will find some books published 
only on Dokodo. I gave it in the book as a, a bonus, by the way, uh, free. Eh? <laughs> it's not another book, it is there. But it is uh, translated as the path of aloneness, the way to go forth alone, or the way of walking alone, etc. Well, I had trouble in uh, assuming uh, uh, this uh, method. I don't want, I didn't want to use uh, the word alone from the beginning. Although this kanji may mean aloneness, obviously a, a genius like uh, Musashi didn't want to say, if you walk after me, if you walk the way I did, you will be alone. This is not what he means. So I searched more into the meanings of this kanji, and you will find out that it, it is also used in uh, words like dokuritsu, which means independence, like the independence war of Turkey. Eh? It is the independence, to be independent. So I came, uh, I, I, I was resolute. I, I said, okay, he meant to be independent. So I translated it into Turkish in the first edition as uh, the, the, uh, the way to independence. And I was content with it. But during the pandemic, while I was working, uh, reworking on the text, I said, well, he, he's, he's talking more about creativity, more about arts and curiosity and creative uh, leadership. Uh, so uh, many, in many places, uh, uniqueness comes in and when I reconsidered, I uh, realized that this uh, exact same kanji also means unique, like unique, uh, like you know, uh, dokuji mm. means uniqueness, unique to somebody, some person, some creator, some artist. So I finally have the feeling I have come to the right translation, including English, by the way. I mean, it doesn't have English does it doesn't have to be the Ten Commandments. I mean, uh, there is an alternative way of seeing this, and I believe this is the uh, correct way. He is not saying, uh, uh, "Come after me to be alone." He's saying, "Come after me if you want to be unique." So, my alternative is the way to uniqueness. I change this in the second edition. Uh, so in this uh, 21 uh, precepts, another issue that I uh, came across in translating is this uh, precept, the 15th precept. It says here, It means, uh, well, if you read it uh, as it is, it means, and it is uh, translated into English as do not act following customary beliefs. Well, I, I, I couldn't agree less. There is something more in this uh, uh, Japanese phrase. So I had translated in the first edition as look after your body well. Goods have no meaning. Because waga means uh, me, uh, waga me, my body, your body in a context, ni uh, itari um, until uh, it, uh, you know it reaches a level. Mono means things, uh, goods. Imi in contemporary Japanese and in those times too means meaning. Uh, suru meaning to, to give a meaning. Koto uh, nashi means uh, negative, so it doesn't mean. Uh, so this is how I translate it. Look after your body well. Waga mini itari, body well. Goods have no meaning. Okay, well, it was, I was all right with this translation, but pandemic helped me. I, when I thought again about it, I started, I was not that comfortable with this translation anyhow. Uh, so uh, I pro problematized it and uh, came up with this conclusion and found out that in the Tokugawa uh, period, this word, which is extinct now in Japanese, nobody uses this, uh, monoimi is written like this, and it means fasting of the samurai. Fasting, you know, to keep hungry for long periods. It is like intermittent fasting or something like that. People like it these days. 
I think it's useful, by the way. Okay, so I uh, I arrived at the uh, final uh, authoritative, let's say, uh, translation. He was trying to say, sorry, do not try to fast to a level that can damage your body. <laughs> so I'm happy now. Mm. I can settle down. Uh, but it is not that easy, you know, it is written in hiragana, uh, if it's kanji, you could understand uh, uh, easily. Then I would look for this, but in hiragana, uh, you, you have to assume, you have to, uh, you know, uh, imagine what it could have meant then. Uh, it means, imi means really, 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 literally uh, meaning, so, okay. Next, uh, maybe the final uh, example that I want to give. This is the monument that was uh, built by his adopted son, Iori, on the memories of his father about nine years after uh, Musashi's death. This text is written by his son, of course, uh, but is a very, you know, uh, intimate or uh, uh, very how do you say, from a, from a son to a father. Very sincere feelings of how Iori saw his father as a hero. There, it starts with this. Uh, this is the memorial inscription for the valiant man who lives in two worlds, Shinmen Musashi Harunobu from Harima province, Akamatsu clan. Okay. Uh, the difficult part was uh, in Turkish, at least, uh, to uh, sound, to have it sound like a Turkish inscription. So I used uh, uh, this phrase, iki alemde yaşayan er kişi, which is well, more or less the valiant man who lives in two worlds. Uh, but it's a bit more uh, inscription-like word, like, you know, valiant. Instead of uh, valiant, I could have used uh, this, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, I could have used, let's say, uh, courageous, courageous or uh, uh, warrior, or so, etc. It says valiant man. So I used, I purposely, cautiously used er kishi, which is which has more religious uh, sound to it and more like. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, suits a mem memorial stone for a, a deceased person. Okay, well, uh, I think this is the uh, final slide. This is the word, this is the uh, introduction of the memorial inscription. He says, his son says, his father has pronounced it in his final days. So, assuming we are listening to him via his inscription, I translated this phrase like this. Look up to the skies with reverence because for the art of war which has reached the truth, death is not an end. Mm. So, dear friends, participants, don't you think he is not, he's still living? Even after 400 years later, we, you know, in an irrelevant country, he would have never known a country like this. In a geography, in a time, 400 years, yeah, he is living among us. We are talking about him. Honestly speaking, I admire him just because of this, to be able to live and be talked over 400 years later. So, uh, well, thank you for uh, coming and listening. Uh, this is it for today, if you have questions. Uh, thank you very much. Um, can we go back uh, to the gallery? And maybe if you can turn off the uh, PowerPoint, uh, Ardal, so we can see each other. Uh, I think it's been a very, you know, uh, very thought-provoking uh, 
lecture. I, I really enjoyed it very much. Uh, not an easy one because, you know, you really have to uh, dive deep into the Buddhist and maybe the, you know, Confucian background uh, of uh, East Asian thought to understand. Um, I'd, you, you know, you can write your uh, questions and comments to me and I can read it to, to make sure that, you know, um, Ardal can, uh, um, because sometimes, you know, when you talk across each other uh, in the internet, it's difficult to understand. So um, first of all, please uh, send your questions and your comments, but I'd like to um, use my position as the moderator, if I may, uh, because I'm really curious um, at one issue, um, Erdal, uh, in your um, expose of uh, Miyamoto Musashi, uh, I detected that in your mind you made a comparison uh, with how Bushido was introduced to the Western world through Nitobe's, it's a, it's a kind of uh, a reified book, you know, Nitobe's Bushido, uh, it became really the uh, uh, soft power image of Japan uh, before, of course, uh, the 1930s, uh, the onset of Second World War, when the image turned very negative. So whatever the Western world or the English speaking world learned of Bushido at its popular level, maybe, but as an image of Japan, projecting it as an image of Japan is from Nitobe's book. So, um, whereas right now what you've done to us is you've introduced for us a master of the time in the 16th and 17th century who uh, thought of Bushido, he is a Bushi himself. So, you know, uh, he's not inventing, he's putting together his personal experience and what he knows from the environment and turning it into a kind of, you know, guidebook or a philosophical discussion. So if you compare Musashi's Bushido to how the Bushido of modern Japan was um, constructed in writings like Nitobe, what are the differences? Because I detected it's a very different vision. Well, what is so strikingly uh, different or similar? I mean, how would you compare critically, you know, uh, the Bushido of Nitobe to the real Bushido, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, Musashi the swordsman? All right, yeah, okay. Thank you for, for this uh, important question. Uh, I think this question has to be asked, uh, you know, frequently in that sense to find an answer. Uh, but um, I have asked myself uh, several times and tried to uh, come up with an answer. And I think uh, uh, we should think like this. I mean, the, the, uh, the samurai who had written like Mus Musashi, um, among those samurai, let's say, the only one who has personally, actively participated in battles is Musashi himself. So he has, he has lived two periods, let's say, the end of uh, the Sengoku, the warring state periods. So he was uh, uh, present in the, at the Sekigahara, and he was present in the Osaka uh, siege of Osaka. He was present, present in the Shimabara rebellion, where the uh, Christians were persecuted and, you know, uh, fought against uh, uh, in that rebellion. So he lived in person the atrocities, the violence, the uh, ways to survive and, you know, the real, he, he experienced the martial arts. As opposed to many other uh, thinkers and writers in the Tokugawa period uh, who, who were uh, represented, I, I believe, by Yamamoto Tsunetomo, who has another authoritative uh, text for Bushido, as we know, uh, uh, hidden below the uh, leaves, it is called, Hagakure, by Yamamoto Sunetomo, as I said. The main difference uh, between the Bushidos of uh, Hagakure and the Book of Five Rings is that Hagakure 
is more a confusion mm. way of telling what bushes should live like. What I mean by that is that, uh, uh, you know, how to conduct uh, in your daily life as opposed to your uh, uh, boss, as opposed to your friends, uh, to your children, your function within the family, uh, the way to uh, serve your uh, daimyo, uh, the way to uh, see the world and, you know, do your functions and etc. Almost everything is about confusion uh, way of uh, living and, you know, helping the system builders or the dominators or let's say rulers to rule their society with the help of the samurai. So it's a role that has to be played, played by the samurai uh, in theory, let's say. On the other hand, Mutashi is giving the, uh, the key to be a warrior, not a soldier. I, I, I make the difference there. I mean, uh, the whole two and a half centuries of Tokugawa period, let's say, more or less, uh, was under the domination of the samurai class, but there was a gradual process of bureaucratization of the samurai class. They had their uh, swords on their bellies, yes, two swords, but they were most of the times meaningless because well, this is the question. What does a warrior mean when there is no war? This is the question they were asking themselves. But it is more related about your spirit and heart, according to Musashi, or your way of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, posture, uh, stand, stance against uh, the world. Uh, on the other hand, um, Sunetomo and others, including uh, uh, other writers, there are many other uh, writings about that, uh, they're telling more about uh, bureaucratic soldiers. You know, uh, there are, I mean, there are generals in history who might not have graduated from general staff academies, but they know when to act, how to act, how to take precautions, how to implement the rules of uh, the way art of war. But there are also bureaucrats. They may have epaulets and you know all kinds of uh, decorations on them, but they might not know how to be a warrior and uh, to be a commander. Uh, you know what I mean? And that's the difference. About Nitobe Inazo, I think that his is a conscious attempt to form, create an identity for the Japanese people. And I, I do respect this conscious attempt because it's, it's an intellectual uh, endeavor uh, to introduce Japan uh, to the West with a positive image. And Which also... One? Yes, sorry, yeah, it, it is a positive image. But uh, uh, I can't resist, but also comment, if I may, that uh, your, your Bushido uh, is about the self, yes. about me, you know, exactly. using that kanji, whereas Nitobe's and late Tokugawa Bushido is about serving somebody. Yes. There's a difference yes. here. There's yeah. an extraordinary difference. This that's, is very that, much the self, you know. That's that's this that's this that's the exact that's exactly the difference. You know, whereas the other one is for the service of the state. It's much more Confucian in the official sense, you know. I serve my emperor, uh, yeah. I serve my lord, uh, and all those values that Nitobe emphasized. This is what Meiji Japan wants, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they'd be too happy with a Musashi personality necessarily all the time, if you think not very ever, carefully. Not ever. Yes, no, that's why, he, in a way, he's a, he's a kind of uh, outcast. I mean, he's, exactly. he doesn't call himself a, a ronin, but he's a kind of he's ronin. A, he's a ronin. He's a ronin. Uh, he, he doesn't have a, a, you know, a long-term employment in most of the times. He travels around, he opens a dojo, he teaches, and uh, uh, finally, at the end of his life, he was happy to be uh, stable, and he was welcomed in Kumamoto, 
uh, and uh, be sure that uh, during the major revolution, his ideas uh, in his dojo and the uh, uh, samurai that were raised in the uh, in uh, that dojo uh, became the leaders of uh, change, uh, along with Yoshida Shoin, who was another thinker and uh, strategist uh, and art, art of war in art of war uh, in such uh, in uh, let's say uh, uh, Yamaguchi. Well, uh, I mean, my my impression is that he is quite representative of this idea of the masterless samurai, which is as important in Japanese culture as the idea of service and all that. The masterless samurai who's dangerous, maybe an outsider, but who might um, open a new world. Uh, yeah. Like uh, the samurai who rebelled against the Tokugawa shogun. And they opened up a new world and uh, founded the Meiji regime, you know, without even maybe planning it as such. Anyway, it's a very, I think it's a very interesting text. So thank you for translating it truly and thinking about this profound text. Uh, I have a couple of comments here that I'd like to read to you for your commentary. Uh, professor, just one question. This is from Jen, I think. Uh, if you would recommend one English translation, assuming your new book is in Turkish, which author would you suggest? That's one question. Um, well, uh, there is a new book uh, that is uh, compiling various texts of uh, Musashi, like I attempted myself. Uh, I would uh, recommend that. I mean, if you Google it, you will put it out. Uh, so it's a recent uh, publication. Try to find, uh, you know, a recent publication. There is not one or two. There are many translations. So I, I don't want to say, you know, because, you know, the, the book is translated about a hundred years ago. I don't want to say that this is bad, the other is good. Uh, they all have things in, in them. The most important thing is the original text itself. In most of the cases, uh, some copies are uh, 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 translated. So the, 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 the origin text has flaws. But in recent years, people started to realize that there are other better texts. So they started working on it. So I, would, I wouldn't uh, you know, pronounce a name, but I would uh, recommend uh, you to find uh, recent publications, not republications, but new uh, work of uh, new scholars. Um, another comment, um, just wondering if you believe the historic accounts of Musashi's win record are accurate or embellishment? Did he, was he so unbeatable? Um, I believe uh, he was unbeatable is correct. Hmm. Because if you fight with a katana, I don't know if you have seen one, or if you have hold, uh, hold one, you know, uh, held one, uh, just a moment. <laughs> it is something like this, you know. And if you if you fight with this in a duel, it is serious business. Come on, yeah, uh, you die, or, or you're crippled. It, it, obviously, he is in one piece, so he he was victorious. He, uh, he had been into many fights. I don't, I, I mean, nobody can confirm if it was really 60. We have to believe in his words, uh, but uh, quite a few, anyhow. And he was uh, victorious. That's also true. But on the other hand, there are many legends that are uh, attributed to him. Uh, so he, he would probably be surprised to hear all kinds of different adventures that are attributed to him, like, you know, uh, fighting against a large bat, uh, fighting against a, a large whale. I mean, I included in my book, there is a, a woodblock print showing a large whale, uh, and on top of it, there is a Musashi with a sword and trying to kill it and etc. <laughs> uh, well, that's also a nice way of remembering uh, your social hero by the uh, society. I don't reject them. I don't despise them I, I like them and it, it it contributes to the air around uh the hercules of uh, japan <laughs> in that sense 
Okay. Uh, yes, uh, questions and comments, please. We look forward to questions and comments. Okay. Everybody understood everything, I guess. Uh, Oz, do you, did, you, uh, did you have a comment? Uh, I, I, I caught up. I caught up with you quite late, actually. I, I was. I was. I came. I came towards the end. I was at the dentist, and um, I could not have a full full grasp of that, you know. So uh, this time I will pass. <laughs> okay. Any other? Yes, Jen. Yes. Well, I was trying to type it out, but it was taking me a long time. That one slide where you had the translation of the Japanese, and then you were going over how the original person had translated it into something that seemed kind of philosophical, and then you had the subsequent translations yeah. over the years. Yeah. How yeah. do you think they came to the original translation that the other author, because it seems so different from the subsequent ones, you know? Uh, you mean... Uh... Just I think it was breaking customs. I thought that was very odd. Yeah. Breaking customs, remember? Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't be stuck with customs or something like that. You know, yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, that yeah. was so weird. I mean, why, why was that translation done in the first place that way? Because there's no way you can, you know, interpret that. Yeah, okay. Yes, Do this not one. following customary beliefs. Yeah, it does. It, it doesn't make beliefs? sense. Uh, Miyamoto, well, uh, well, this is it, Jen. Uh, this is the book in Japanese, uh, and it is translated by Sherap, uh, uh, well, a Japanese national uh, published this in 2006. Miyamoto Musashi, his life and writings. Uh, translator obviously didn't understand. I mean, there's, there's a serious uh, misunderstanding but, but there. The, uh, the uh, precepts, the 21 precepts, they are simple. The, it is obvious uh, there is no misunderstanding, no uh, miswriting there. So this was the text there, obviously. Uh, he, he could not have uh, mistaken this. He couldn't yeah. understand. He said he over-translated it. it or, over or just uh, it's, it's sort of assumed this is probably what he says or something. Yeah. He wanted but, to get away with this, but he couldn't. Somebody realizes always, you know. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now I want to uh, maybe one day, hopefully, if I have time, I will translate uh, the Turkish test text into Jap in English. Actually, you uh, should. Don't wait. Uh, you you many, should many wait translations, too long. But I, but I want to challenge uh, the English translators. Uh, yeah. Right no, no. Honestly, I, I strongly rec. I mean, suggest. I mean, that was my impression that you know now that you've been able to penetrate, especially into the mystical. Because your use of the Sufi interpretation fits perfectly, you know, because uh, my impression of uh, uh, the presentation was that if there is a Confucian Bushido, there's also a Buddhist Bushido. To me, uh, this uh, text was closer to Zen to Zen Buddhism than say yeah. Confucius. Yeah. So, uh, and Sufism is perfect. It's a good way of deciphering the Zen, you know, uh, levels of uh, experience. So using that, I think you should do an English translation. Yes. Honestly, yes. it's not okay. too long. You can do that, you know, and it will be so corrective. Well, I was uh, not to English, uh, but uh, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Japanese uh, wanted me uh, to tell about, uh, uh, you know, the book of uh, Five Things in Japanese. I was happy to tell the Japanese about the Miyamoto Musashi. So why not? Yes. In I, think, I think you should, because the other translations, obviously, I don't think that they've been able to penetrate into the uh, philosophical background, you know the background of, you know, the way of thinking uh, right. of right. uh, Musi, Musashi himself and his uh, age, you know, it was a Buddhist age. That's right. It was very much a Buddhist, and Buddhism gets ignored in Japanese studies. People just deny it in a way. Okay, any other questions and comments? 
Well, it has been, I think, a very, uh, uh, very thought provoking uh, presentation. And uh, I really look forward to the English in some way, you know, because it will be so corrective uh, of the superficiality of some of the translations in, in the, uh, that are available right now. Well, thank you very much for uh, uh, being with us uh, to the end. So uh, we look forward to uh, your participation in our future uh, Japan talks and uh, um, Asia talk series. So thank you, Arda. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you for organizing. Thanks, Semiha, uh, for helping to plan and realize. And thanks everybody uh, for bearing uh, with me for I don't know, probably uh, I'm uh, long, uh, you know, I have uh, already finished my, uh, a lot of um, but just I enjoy Before, talking. before we leave, actually, I noticed Nur Yalman is there. Nur Bey, it's so nice to see you after all these years. Uh, would you, did you want to comment? I thought it was an absolutely brilliant, brilliant talk. Absolutely fascinating and go, went, literally to the heart of Japanese culture. Uh, I congratulate uh, uh, Kuchuki Alchin for his uh, absolutely wonderful work. Thank you, thank you so much. It is, it well, is important uh, to hear it from you. Professor Yalman, we hope to see you and maybe one day we can bother you for a talk of as course. part of our series. Uh, great, great pleasure. You are receiving the uh, announcements, I'm assuming. You know, you're yes, receiving yes. the announcements. So we're going to yes. have other series as well. Yes. So thank yes. you. Thank you for participating. Thank Ma you. I, have a, I do have a question to uh, uh, Erdal Bey. Um, uh, the, the cultural form of Buddhism in India is... Um, is not as, how shall I say, um, um, aggressive, as clear cut as that, as the way it has been interpreted in Japan. The difference is really quite considerable in the sense that uh, the Buddha of, of India has to do with the discovery of the self in a very mystical way, I think the comparison with the Sufis is absolutely appropriate, but it is much less uh, preoccupied with the sword, much less preoccupied with that, that element of, of really sharp aggression that you see in the, in the Japanese interpretation of these matters. Hmm. Okay, well, um, first of all, uh, thank you for, uh, very much for your uh, question. Um, let, me, let me say that no religion proposes violence. No religion really in, 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 in its core promotes warrior uh, way of life. Yes, it's something that we have to put, you know, aside. But it exists. That's why warriors, in most of the times throughout the history, they prefer to find, uh, you know, uh, ways to legitimize their ways and ways of living, and you know, uh, uh, exercising violence uh, during uh, uh, war. Uh, uh, by uh, by unorthodox, let's say, branches of belief. I mean, in Christianity, does Christ, you know, says if somebody, one who dies with, uh, lives with the sword, dies with the sword. So they know that Christ was against violence. But there is the crusade. In India, uh, of course, at the start, but Buddha was never a sympathizer of violence. Obviously, his teachings uh, do not include uh, violence. But there is this Kushan Empire, and Buddhism was uh, uh, instrumental 
in establishing a central state. So it was used by the rulers to organize the society and the uh, army as well in China, in uh, Korea, and in Japan too. So it is not the religion itself, but the rulers and the benefiters of uh, 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 the organizing power of the uh, religion uh, that is uh, usurped, let's say, by uh, those rulers. Now, I, I, have, I can answer that uh, like this, I think. On the other hand, in India, uh, there is no more, almost no more uh, Buddhism, as, as you know, uh, until only recently, and that person is Japanese national, by the way, and I met that person in Kyoto, uh, who restarted, uh, respreading uh, Buddhism in uh, India, and mm. he calls his Buddhism, you know what? Militant Buddhism. Mm. He says, Buddhism <laughs> does not necessarily have to be silent and passive and, uh, you know, accepting uh, all, uh, uh, all the assaults against itself. So he has about 10 million followers in India, which is a growing sect in India. And he's fighting together with the uh, Muslims, you know, that's interesting, uh, uh, Muslims against the Hindu oppression every now and then, he says. Yes. So he's, he's, a, he's, he's a proponent of uh, uh, militant uh, Buddhism. So it we can are, happen. We are, we are seeing a lot of militant Buddhism in uh, Myanmar, Mm. In Thailand, yeah. Dev right. devastating. So, Buddhists are not uh, are not um, separated or uh, or protected from from violence. Um, no, but uh, but there's something unusual in the in the discipline and sharpness of the mm. Japanese interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, there are many other uh, sects in Japan uh, who who. Uh, you know, categorically reject uh, violence, so they keep away from warriors and samurai and stuff. Yes, so, yeah. But on the other hand, there were also clashes of religion. If you ask the Japanese, they would say, oh, no, there is no religious uh, battles and wars in uh, Japan. No, there are, uh, because some different sects of Buddhism fought with each other. Sometimes mm -hmm. during the warring states period, the samurai fought against temples. Yes, they of course. killed, they massacred each other. So it happens, yeah. but it's, it's, it is not due to, I wouldn't you know, prefer to say uh, it is uh, because of Buddhism or Japanese understanding of Buddhism. It is just you, I mean, yeah, okay. Well, that's how I think. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for Thank you. Okay, well, right. thank you very much. And uh, again, uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I, I, I have a final comment. What, okay. a, what a joy to listen to something so uh, intellectual of such high quality uh, in these days of, of absolute muck that we are we're, we're, we're getting from, uh, from, from this country. This country doesn't deserve this, no. this low level of intellectual life. Uh, so such a great pleasure to listen to you, uh, Dalbe, and of course, uh, um, Sir Chukanan. Uh, this is a, a, has been an absolutely wonderful experience. Thank you. I hope, thank, I hope we can keep it up. Uh, I hope the uh, teaching, teachings of Miyamoto Musashi will also help to empower the good people uh, not only the uh, bad people. <laughs> yes. And uh, we, we hope that, uh, uh, Professor Yalman, you will uh, uh, join us and, uh, you know, help heighten our spirit with your commentary, <laughs> you know, uh, yes. rich uh, contribution to our uh, discussions. Thank you. Certainly, certainly. Great Thank pleasure. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Okay, people, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.